Hi guys, it's out. Dragon Age: The Guard is out. Also known as Dragon Age: The Gay Guard, The Trans Guard, The Woke Guard, you name it. The Grifter's favorite plaything at the moment. Uh, but I'm, I mean, they've already started to like shift because it's doing well. <laughs> uh, sorry to start it off like that, talking about Grifters, but I don't know. I just think it's kind of ridiculous and funny <laughs> how mad they are <laughs> but yeah Dragon Age Vulgar is out uh, I haven't played the Dragon Age games on this channel but I have played them all and I do love them I am a big Dragon Age fan though for the most part I've only played them all all, all the way through once in 2020 that's when I first played them 2020 or 2021 one of those they kind of blend together. Um, so I haven't had to wait for as long as a lot of people, but it's still around four years. So it, that's a long time for me. <laughs> let's let's watch this into a cutscene and then create the characters. <laughs> I knew him as Solus. Smart, thoughtful, loved to hear himself talk. But long ago, he had a different name. The Dreadwolf. Ancient elven god of lies, or heroic rebel against tyranny. Depending on which story you believe. In his desperate fight against the corrupt elven gods, so Solus imprisoned them. Creating a veil that split our world from the raw magic of the Fade. He had won. But the veil cost the elves everything. Their magic, their freedom, even their immortality. This is very Dragon Age 2, which now, is exciting for me because it's my favorite one. Tear down that veil and undo the damage he caused. Even if that means our world has to burn. It's music. Somebody's got to stop him. And that's... Where you come in. Oh, hell yeah, Eric. <sighs> oh, and actually here, uh, where you choose between elf, kunari, human, and dwarf, I actually have no clue what I want to do. Um, because I've tried to think about this, but I, I can't, I don't know what I want. Um, but okay, let's talk about my history really quick with Dragon Age here, or like my experiences and what I've done. In Origins, for example, I did play as a human, because I usually do that when I'm playing like a, a series like this for the first time, when I'm not familiar with like the history and like whatever of the other different races. I usually play as a human. It, it, it works for me, like it, it was just an introduction. And so I played as a human, a human man named Castian Kusland, and and I romanced Severin, but I accidentally like fucked up the romance near the end of the game because um, there's a scene where he I've only played Origins all the way through once, not not because I didn't want to replay it again. I tried several times, but because I was just having technical issues a lot of the time. That's literally it. Otherwise, I would have replayed it a million times. I love Origins. Um, but I have watched a lot of playthroughs, so. Um, but towards the end of the game, Severin, like, wants to give a, a romanced character, um, I think it's a pendant, a necklace or something? Something like that? It's it's some, some something like that. Um, and I, I don't remember why but i distinctively distinctly got the feeling that he didn't really want to give it away that he wanted to keep it that he just like felt obligated to do it so i refused to take it i was like no 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 like this i can't take this this means so much to you and it ended sort of negatively but i, I thought that was just like a little fight but no lo and behold after i finished the game i looked stuff up and i found out that the reason that um, I didn't get any more for the, for the romance in the ending 
wasn't because it was neglected. It was because my relationship with Severin ended in that scene. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was a lot. Uh, but yeah, I romanced Severin, but I fucked it up at the end. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I played as a human in the first one. In the second one, obviously I played as a human because you have to. Um, oh, I was a human warrior in the first one. In the second one, I was a human mage, which I loved. I love that. And obviously, just gonna say it now, love the mages, fuck the Templars. Also, Anders is who I romanced in Dragon Age 2. Um, I did not... Like, feel well, I felt a bit betrayed at the end because Anders didn't like let me know about his plan because I would have helped him. Anders did nothing wrong. Who said that? <clears throat> okay, uh, <laughs> um, so I was a human obviously there because I didn't have a choice. So, right there, I was like, oh damn, I should have chosen something else. I should, I should have done something else, but I didn't know you could only play as a human in Dragon Age 2. So. Uh, in Dragon Age Inquisition, I played as a uh, an elf. Well, I was also I was also playing as a man in Dragon Age Two and Inquisition. Um, played as a uh, elven mage. Oh shit! I forgot the name. Sorry, this is kind of a mess. Uh, my name in uh, Dragon Age Two was uh, Colin Colin Hawk. They also always see because my name's always see. I do that, um, and then I usually kind of make them, like, have aspects of my appearance, but not actually look like me, because I don't care enough to do that. I want to make them unique. Um, so, like, I'll do, like, my skin tone, my eye color, my hair color, maybe some details. I don't know. That's usually, like, all I do. And then I do whatever I want. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, in Dragon Age Inquisition, Elven Mage named Clay Lavellan. Unfortunately, that is not the full name, because for some reason I decided to name my elven mage <laughs> Clayton Lavellan. I think I just could not come up with something, and I was just like, fuck it, whatever, I'll just do that. But Clay was right there, so so in this I'm gonna name him Clay, not Clayton. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, so I played as human twice, and then an elf. I have not played as Kunari, I have not played as Dwarf. So, I, I could go for either Kunari or Dwarf, but I don't know if I want to because I still feel like I haven't read any of the books or anything. And I haven't watched, I've only really like played the games, that's all. And again, I haven't like fully played them all through several times or anything, so I'm not like an expert expert on the lore of everything. And I still feel like I don't know enough about Kunari to comfortably roleplay as them. You know, like play as a character who is Kunari. Like that doesn't feel comfortable to me. I just feel like I, I would be in the dark the entire time. I don't I don't feel comfortable. I don't know. It just it feels it feels like I I wouldn't know what was going on with my character, which isn't good. So that leaves, you know, dwarf. But I don't know if I wanna but because like Dwarves cannot use magic. I can't be a mage. I want to be a mage. So then that leaves elf and human. <laughs> so maybe I should go for Kunari. But then the thing about Kunari is you don't get a lot of hair options, which the hair is so good. So why should I? Mm. And kind of a part of me doesn't want to do elf because my inquisitor is an elf. So. <laughs> Uh, also, I just realized I kind of went through all the basics of Dragon Age right there. I mean, a lot of it I will go through as I like learn stuff. I'll, I'll talk about my opinions and experiences in the previous games. Since I didn't play it on the channel, I'll kind of bring stuff up as I go. Um, it's so wild that I'm actually sitting down to play this right now. Like it doesn't it doesn't feel real, to be honest. <sighs> okay. <laughs> um. God, so, so like, like I said, because my Inquisitor is an elf, I kind of don't want to play as an elf. But human feels so boring, you know? But also, again, Kunari, I feel like I don't know enough, so maybe I should do elf anyway. Maybe it doesn't matter that my Inquisitor is also an elf, because they're going to be very different. I mean, for, for the first, I mean, first of all, this elf is going to be non-binary. 
uh, because now I can't do that. Couldn't do that in Inquisition, so. Hell yeah, they're gonna be non-binary. Because, well, I'm non-binary, so that's another piece taken from me. Which, by the way, is so nice that we're getting to be non-binary in games now. Like, that was such a, like, I loved that in Baldur's Gate 3, because I didn't know that was gonna, holy shit, I didn't know it was gonna feel as good as it did. I, like, I didn't know I was gonna feel so, like, emotional about it while playing, but I did. Um... But obviously, there weren't a lot of discussions in the game about, like, about my characters, my my tabs and my dark urges identity. Um, but it was still so nice to be, like, like everyone was using they them pronouns, everyone was uh, avoiding, you know, uh, gendered language and stuff like that. Like, it was, it was great. It was really nice. And then at one point, when I was doing my evil Dark Urge, right after I'd finished my resisting Dark, resisting dark Urge playthrough, I, um, near the end of the game, uh, this one character who, like, loves your character, I, want, I don't want to spoil much, uh, like, refers to you as, I don't really remember exactly, but it's, it's something along the lines of my genderless master or something like that and i remember i was i i i like teared up because that was the first time i believe that anyone in the game actually like referred to my character as like like the fact that they are non-binary just instead of just like using the pronouns and stuff like that you know no it's nice but yeah i think i'm gonna do elf then i think i'm gonna do elf <laughs> I think this is a uh, a good starting point. Probably it's very like doesn't have a lot of stuff. Like it's very plain. They them and non-binary. Awesome. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, I did see a recommendation um, from a I believe it was. Uh, Carla Elizabeth. I actually don't know if I'm saying that correct, to be honest. Uh, but I think so. Uh, but um, I, I, there was a rec recommendation from her. I don't know if it was in her review. No, it was in the Tips and Tricks video, I think. And to create the Inquisitor first, because you get the opportunity to like change Rook basically immediately. Um, like, I think immediately after the prologue, you get the ability to change Brooke's appearance whenever, um, which I'm still going to spend a lot of time working on them in the character creation, but I think that's a good idea so that I don't like half-ass my Inquisitor. So I'm going to do that. Let's just pick Mage. I'm just like, whatever, because I'm not... The Wait, does it allow you to go backwards? Yeah, okay. So let's do this. Let's make my Inquisitor first. Okay, let's go. This is really cute, by the way. It looks like in Inquisition. Interesting thing, though, about my Inquisitor here is that I can, I'm can i only able to use my memory of my Inquisitor. Because, like, I used to have... I did have a folder with all my custom characters from different games, but... I don't know where it went, so all I have is my memory, which that makes me feel okay. I have his tattoo clear in my head, so I need to do it now. <laughs> I need to make sure I give him his tattoos right now, his Valsleen. Uh, where is it? Because I know they get added all of the ones from... The, um, from Inquisition. Okay, I wish I, I wish there was a picture because I, I'm genuinely like forgetting like exactly which one I gave him. I mean, I'll know it when I see it, I think. But it's one of these ones similar to this, you know? Oh, it's this one, I think. But without this. I think, yeah. I think it's this.
Why did I t start tearing up? Damn. Yeah, I think it's that. But let me... Okay, it's 27. Let's go through to make sure. And they did get back all of the voice actors from Inquisition too, which is awesome. And I'm so excited to hear, like literally hear my Inquisitor. Although I am a little worried about obviously the the world choices you get to make, how obviously there's not a lot. I know there's been a lot of drama about that. I'm not too worried. I think there's a reason for it and I think it's gonna be fine. But the one thing I am worried about is my Inquisitor's personality. And like, I'm worried that my Inquisitor is going to say something that my Inquisitor would not have said. You know, that's what I'm really worried about. Um, and I hope that's not gonna be a thing. I really don't, I really hope it's not gonna be a thing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's definitely correct. That's what my Inquisitor had. Uh, let's change the hair color to be correct first which actually um this one of the few cases where i didn't make it entirely accurate because i did give him like a brownish hair color instead of my ginger hair color it was like something like this you know like it's reddish but it's like a brown reddish i think maybe it's more like Yeah, something like this. I might mess around a little more with it. We'll see. Right, but let's match the eyebrow color. Okay. Uh, maybe I should try and get my eyebrows right. Too. Well, his eyebrows right too. But I again, only problem is I. I have no idea. <laughs> like, this is something that's not clear in my mind, like the eyebrows. Actually, this feels like it's pretty similar. I actually think I have, like, an... Have it in my brain, like, what his eyebrows look like. And it's not like this. It looks good, though. But Let's see if I can find something that's similar to what I do have in my brain right now that I think is correct. This is kind of similar to what I have in my brain. This. Oh, wait, this. It's this. It's this. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> uh, eyelashes. Uh, that has some beautiful eyelashes. Oh, right. Sorry. Forget, I, f I forgot that. I kept forgetting this uh, yesterday while I was um, remaking my. recreating my hawk. Um, that you can like zoom in and like there were some things where there's like a lot of detail where I just didn't zoom in. I was just like, uh, okay, I guess I, okay, that's good. <laughs> Which is silly. Okay, let me. Mascara all over them. So I prefer when the eyelashes are black. Like it better. I actually really like these, but I want that. I want that to be more noticeable. Like I really like this. This looks good. And you know what? I'll just do these. I think they're really nice. Um. Okay. Uh, all right. So those things are done. Maybe I should look for a hair cell to, to match because I think it will be easier to get the face right if I have the hair the way I want it. I don't think I'm gonna go for exact, like, I mean, actually this hairstyle was something I had in my head, kind of, maybe it would work. Like, mm. I don't know how to like describe the hairstyle that I gave him in Inquisition. Um, I gave him like a straight 
her hairstyle because I didn't really have a choice because the hair sucked. Which, by the way, that, yeah, the hairs. Like, by the way, I really saw how much we all shit on the hairstyles in all of the other Dragon Age games. And they're like, oh yeah, you want good hair? Here you go. Here you go. Happy? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy actually, Bioware. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, like, okay. Do, do you see this? Do you see this? Like, this is crazy. The hair physics. Like, do you, do you see this? Also, the hairs look really good, just on their own. Like, what? Okay, messy bun. On my way to get fucking bought by One Direction, I guess. Ooh. Actually, maybe I shouldn't have brought up One Direction. Like, this could definitely work for my Inquisitor. Oh, I also need to make sure I make him look a bit older, because it has been nine, ten years, right? So, I should make sure to make him look a little bit older. Um... But like, this is sort of similar to the hair I gave him in Inquisition. But it has like a middle part and some subtle waves, like, and it's pretty like symmetrical on both sides. And it's down like to the neck right here. I, I think if you love Inquisition, you probably know which hair I'm talking about. It was like the only one that I thought looked good. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to try and look for one that looks similar to that. And then I can look through properly when I'm making Rook. Because that one... Oh, this one is like even here. So this, this honestly could work, but I don't like this. <laughs> uh, oh, this is nice. This could also definitely work. Like, I mean, thing is, after all these years, like, he probably changed his hairstyle, you know? That's the thing. I'm just trying to think of what could work. Could work, for sure. Okay. Okay, Bob. This is cute. Not for my Inquisitor, though. Oh, I didn't even say who I romanced. Well, actually, I mean, I guess that's good, kind of, that I skipped who I romanced Inquisitor, in Inquisitor, in Inquisition, because I'm gonna get to decide that in here, so you'll see in a second. <laughs> and that's also gonna allow me the opportunity to talk about some, some other stuff in Inquisition. Related to the world state. It's cute. Uh. Okay, this makes me think, like, I wonder if uh, Julian's gonna be playing Veilguard, because I'm sure he'll be happy to see this hairstyle. <laughs> oh, this is so nice. Oh, and this hair, okay. We gotta back out for this one. Do you see this? Do you see the length? And just, I can't get over the hair physically. Like, I have yet to see, like, I feel like every single person I've watched uh, mess around in character creation a little bit will be doing this at some point. Like, because it's wild. And if they don't, it's a missed opportunity. Like, this fe this is so satisfying. Like, it's not glitching all over the place. It's just, like, moving all over the place. Like, this is a shampoo commercial. Like, look at this. Who is that? The ring. Oh, it's hard to turn around properly. Hold on. Way too much. Okay. You rang? Oh my god, it's so pretty. Eee! Sorry, I just love it. I'm not gonna give this hair to my Inquisitor, though, but it's so nice. Holy shit. Alright, okay. What do I wanna give my Inquisitor? What do I wanna give Clay? There were a few that I felt worked when I looked at them. Obviously, let's go for one of those. So cute. Like, I did like this, like this vibe. Like, it's pretty different from an Inquisition, but that's maybe a good thing, you know? But also, like, I would like to give... Give uh, my Inquisitor curly hair. Because that's what I wanted to do, but 
the nicest one I could get on him wasn't wasn't curly. Like this, yeah, the thing that I started with, like, yeah, this actually does really work. So I might just go for this, actually, yeah, yeah. Because it's similar in length. Just sli slightly different style, like not a not a middle part, and um, some curls in there. Like it's, it's nice. It was a good starting point, actually. <laughs> now we get to the difficult part. Like, his face is pretty damn clear in my... Oh, right, eye color, sorry. Not yet, then. <laughs> um, uh, he has, like... Hazel eyes. Actually, this is kind of exactly it. This is basically exactly what it was. I mean, let's just make it a little more saturated. Like, yeah, that just feels exactly right. So, Scalera color. Oh. I just need to, like, two. It's, like, slightly, slightly different. Bloodshot. Nah. Well, maybe a little bit, like just a 5%. Barely noticeable. It's pretty cool, but no. Okay, now I can start doing the face. It already looks pretty similar, but not exactly, so. Head shape. Honestly, this is a really good starting point, so I'm not gonna touch it. Uh, Alright, skin tone. Um. Hmm. I would say he's like... Honestly, this might be exactly it. Yeah, I think so. So, that's good. Now, complexion. Here's where I can make him look a bit older. So let's... Wait, how do elves age in Dragon Age, actually? I should look that up. Because I don't want to make him look unrealistically older, you know? Um, dragon age elves. Oh, don't they like add all uh, pretty much age normally because of obviously the veil fucking that up? Okay, they have said uh, the same lifespan as humans. Okay, so yeah, I can make them. I can make them look. Oh, hold on, let me look at these rugged ones. This may be what I want to go for. A oh, freckled. Oh my god, wait. I think I did make my Inquisitor freckled. This is unfortunate though that you can't. That freckles are tied to complexion, and so you can't put freckles on like an older character or the older looking character. That is a bummer. But these look really good. Hmm. I might just have to do something like this. I mean, it's only been like nine, ten years, right? Um, I think it's fine for for him to not look like much, much older, you know. But the reason, because okay, I forgot to mention this. There are three spoilers we've seen. They're not huge, like story spoilers. They're like two of them are returning characters, and one is a personal spoiler about one of the characters. One of the companions. And I'll talk about all of those throughout this video, I guess. <laughs> um, but because of one of those spoilers, I do want to make him look a bit older. But, I mean, I guess I don't have to. It's fine. Uh, obviously, my character didn't have this many freckles. In the front, in, I think it was more like this, but honestly, I might do this because I can. Because, like, you couldn't have anything as nice looking with freckles as this in Inquisition. So, I might do this because it feels right. But let's just let's look at other complexions first. 
them. This is like a, this is like the exact uh, complexion in Inquisition, probably that he had. Very smooth. These are so cool. Like all of these options. Dark circles. This is very me. Weathered. Like, see this? This is great, you know? Like, ah, uh, I don't know. Oh, I didn't really look at all of them very well. And this? Maybe a bit too much, I think. For me. Like, yeah, this one I really like. Like, he looks like he's aged a, a little bit, but not, like, ridiculously in that little time. Well, it's not little time, but you know what I mean. Got acne. Rosy. Hmm. Oh, no, this is very, like, his complexion in Inquisition. Like, especially the lips. Like, obviously this redness here, not really, but... You can fix that with like makeup and stuff, so it's fine. Um, well, fix it, but you know, like get it more accurate. I mean, but the lips. This is pretty much exactly how his lips looks, and then the skin too. This one is really good, but it's too young, obviously. Oh, but this is like a slightly older version of it. Wait. Yeah. <sighs> like this one could really work, but oh god, I wish I had freckles. I wish I had freckles. But okay, so it's between rosy three and freckled. Two. Freckle two. They're so far away from each other too. And Rosie three. Nah. Um, I'll stick with Rosie three for now. And then we create the face, and we'll see if I change my mind after. Because this is more accurate. So, let's see. Okay, here we go. The difficult part. I might speed through some of this. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Obviously, elves in Inquisition were very, very thin. I didn't like how thin they were. How thin I was forced to have my character be. So, that's not going to be how... My Inquisitor is here, he's gonna have put on some weight, because I don't want him to be that thin. Let's hide the hair for this, for a little bit, I think. I actually might put it to 100%, because that's not super wide, actually. It's like 75%, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Latin. What was that like? Oh, it's the forehead. Okay, so. I see, it's, it's in the forehead section. I did the smallest it can be there. Depth. Yeah, like. I have. Keep browse. Oh shit. Spacing. They do need to be closer together. Yeah, probably my negative 100%. That's good, that's good, that's good. I think this is a really good start. I, I think I have to think I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because it feels a bit weird. Like, oh yeah, this is pretty accurate when I literally cannot show you how he looks because I've somehow lost the the screenshot. I'll try to like look for it a little bit later today, but I don't think I'll find it. I think it's completely gone because I I looked really hard. I I couldn't find him. Um. Cheeks depth. That's cheekbone depth. Okay. Ooh. 
Honestly, kind of getting there already. I feel like the from like the eyes up, it already looks like him. <laughs> well, for the most part, like the eyes aren't entirely accurate, but they're pretty close. Also, there's things that I couldn't do before that I will do now, definitely. By the way, this character is going to look very different from how my Rook does, because I think I decided to go for a very, like, tradi like traditionally alfy look in Inquisition, so I didn't do what I would usually do, for the most part. I still, I still give, give him a big nose, because I love big noses. Um, so I guess that was the only thing that was, like, not, like, traditionally stereotype elf. But everything else pretty much was. And I have to really work hard on the lips because I love how his lips look in Inquisition. So I need to get that right. <laughs> and they were really shiny and pretty. So, oh shit. Um, so that was cheeks and jaw. So Chen, here we go. larynx I've already seen a lot of people who don't seem to realize that um, cisgender women actually do have Adam's apples that's like just that's just like a part of the human body it's just usually more like prominent in men but not exclusively like everyone has them like, I recently saw, saw people fucking transvestigating Sarah Michelle Geller because they could see her Adam's apple. And it's like, yeah, she actually does have a human body. Great of you to notice. Like, <laughs> it's so stupid how they literally know nothing about the human body or biology, but then they will cry about biology. It's, it, I mean, it, I don't know why I'm surprised. It's just a bit wild. <laughs> I might be like talking a little bit more about like, you know, like anti woke grifters because of how extremely mu much they hate this game. Well, f right now, soon they're like in a few years or maybe even a few weeks or months, they're gonna love this game and claim that it's not woke. Just like they did with Polish Gate 3. <laughs> Ah, scalp. Okay. Now with scalp, I actually think it's best to do it with the hair on. Because you can make it look pretty weird. Uh, but like, I think the importance is like figuring out how you want it to affect the hair. And like, it's hard to know if you like the scalp without the hair on top. Unless you want your character to not have like a lot of hair. Then, obviously, yeah. <laughs> like you see how it affects the hair. A lot like this the height of it it's not a huge difference but it but it is a difference not some volume Awesome. It doesn't need to look fine, but I'm like, I'm thinking like, oh, I'm worried that maybe there's some sort of cutscene where for some reason your character doesn't have hair. <laughs> I don't know why it would be like that, but I don't know the, what they do. Well, this one makes a huge difference with the hair, in my opinion. Like, this is a very different hairstyle, in my opinion, to this. These are two different people. But he has a pretty, pretty big 
uh, forehead. I, like, I feel like almost... I almost feel like the highest one is what I should go for. Maybe a little lower. Maybe like... Maybe like... Like 80. Yeah, 80. Let's go for that. Hmm. 90. 90. Let's go. That's great. Okay. Alright, so we're done with head. Now, body. Well, I do want to finish the face first, to be honest. Well, no. Hmm. Let's do it, buddy. Oh, let's choose. Oh, you can't choose underground. Oh, but that makes sense. You're not going to see them, so I guess it doesn't matter. Now, when it comes to the sliders, something I've heard a lot is that, um, you know, the body shape, the body preset you choose changed them, which that is true. But unfortunately, it seems like no matter what you do, you can't... There's some sliders that really don't make that huge of a difference, unfortunately, which... The butt slider, yes, is one of them. That one's the worst one, I think, in my opinion, because it, it there's barely a difference. You, like, it's unfortunate. It's not the most important thing in the world, but I hope we get some mods or something, or maybe they even do it in an update. I don't know. That lets us do a little bit more. Like, it doesn't need to be massive. I would like, I would love it if I could make it massive, but you know, just a little more. You know, a little more. Let's do that one because that's smaller than then. Let's see what we can do here. Like, oh my god, this like this is so cool that we can actually do like fat characters. I mean, there's definitely like a limit, and I figured because obviously they had to think about all the animations and whatever. Yeah, but like this is still pretty amazing for Dragon Age, a game where you haven't been able to like affect your body type at all. It's really cool. Like, I never thought I'd be able to do... Like, I can actually, like, fully create myself. Like, my real self in the game now. I don't have to worry about it feeling weird because it's like, oh, it's me, but skinny, <laughs> you know? Also, judging by this outfit, this is the casual wear for Shadow Dragon, so I'm guessing... The Inquisitor is in the Shadow Dragons? Or maybe they're, um... Maybe he's, like, uh... Just dressing like one in order to... Because aren't, like, the Inquisition... Isn't the Inquisition, like, um... Banned from Tevinter? <laughs> right? I feel like I heard that somewhere. I don't know where I heard that, but... Yeah. But yeah, I like this, I like this. Yeah, I like this. This is nice. The body proportions. Obviously, tall. <laughs> the tallest it goes. Which, I heard people talking about, like, everyone looks short. Yeah. They kind of do, but it's like... Honestly, I'll take everyone kind of looking like they're short for a height slider. Like, I don't know, this makes a difference to me. Yeah, look at this but also i think maybe this outfit is like a bad one because it's kind of baggy but still like this is smallest pretty small this is the biggest on this body reset but yeah i do think this outfit like affects it badly negatively i do think so but it's still that's not a big difference either way and then bolt shies of course uh Now, let's do eye shape. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, that's right, I think. That's right. Okay, oh, I did this already. Did eyebrows and eyelashes? The nose. Okay, here we go. Honestly, it's pretty close. I just need to make it, like, bigger. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, that is, that is it, that's it, I think. Okay, now let's see if I can do this mouth. Again, I hate that I can't show you what it looks like, but it's really nice. So I'll, I'll see if I can get it right, and I'll let, like, I'll let you know if it's correct or not. I won't lie. You can tell it right away, like right now that I can't get it exactly accurate. I think the lip shape, like the only problem here is the shape of the top lip, which I think that's pro that's tied to the face you choose. So I can't get that right. Like it's like, there's no like, um, it's called a Cupid's bow. There's no, it's just like a straight circle over. But that's, that's okay, you know, it's not the biggest deal of that. Like, this is pretty close. This is pretty close. Yeah, you know, I think this is probably the close I'm gonna get, and I am not unhappy with it at all. I'm happy with it, actually. To have the ears, obviously, but honestly, ears look good. Let me just maybe make them bigger because I can. I mean, honestly, I think I'm just going to leave the ears at, as they are. They look great. And they're pretty covered by the hair, too. Like, yeah, this is this is my Inquisitor. This is him. Nice. I might give him facial hair. Wait, can elves have facial hair in Dragon Age? Hold on. <laughs> Actually, don't know. It might not even be an option. No, there's no option because you can't. Okay, I see it right here. That's, it's supposed to be the hair. Okay. I wasn't sure if that was a thing in Dragon Age 2, just like in D&D. Um, &D. Although I think in D&D &D it's not entirely true anymore. Hmm. Makeup. Oh yeah, the lip. Oh right, the lips don't still don't look entirely right too because they don't have the same color and shine. That is important. I'm gonna turn off the glitter. I'm gonna mess around with griddle, griddle, glitter for my um, rook. So don't worry, I am touching that. It's just not, not yet. Okay. Now that's just the top lip. Uh, wait, let me do something drastic so I can easily see it. A white is really noticeable, so let's do that. Okay, so I can easily see where it adds, what it does.
Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. Hold on. That is it. Yes. That's exactly it, actually. Holy shit. Okay, and now glossiness. Glossiness in Inquisition was like so extreme. You do a little bit, it's a lot. So I think this is the most you can do here is pretty much exactly right. I might have to turn up the intensity a little bit to get more. That is pretty much exactly right. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's do some just some eyeliner. I would like. That's like all I want. Uh, some black eyeliner. Uh, that is tied to this, so I need to pick one of these. Ooh, that's nice. It's really nice too. Oh, holy shit. I looked at some makeup options um, yesterday, but I didn't look at anyone with like the eyeshadow off and only the eyeliner on. So I didn't even really realize you could do this, and this is so cool. How customizable is this? I might, I'll probably go with this one, I feel like, but let me look at all of them. Maybe it's something strikes something. Well, this is nice too. I might do that one. are so nice. Whoa. I like that one. 23. And 24. Holy shit. And 20. They're all so good. These are some really good makeup options, by the way. In fact, you can actually, like, have the eyeliner and uh, eyeshadow be separate. I mean, obviously, you can't choose them, like, separately. Choose two different ones, but... Still, I think the amount of um, this is so nice. Holy shit. Not for my Inquisitor, but oh my god, that is so nice. I'm so glad you can like change your Brooks appearance like pretty much whenever. Because I'm sure I'll be changing, changing up their appearance like pretty frequently. I did say I liked 23 and 24. I don't know if that's what I want to go for. I feel like 21 as well. I almost feel like I need to go for something more subtle for my Inquisitor to not make him look... Oh shit, sorry, I forgot about this. Make him look too different from how he looked in Inquisition. I still want it to look pretty similar. I want to be able to see like, oh yeah, that's him. That's him. My Inquisitor. I might just do this with just the upper, because it makes a huge difference. Looks really nice. So yeah, I'll do that. That's enough for me. <laughs> okay, wait, let's see if I can cover up this um, redness a little bit. Oh, wait, this, oh, this is good, actually. Hold on. Look at this. Just a little bit, like... Let's really look at this. Like, this is the it off. Ooh. Like, that makes a pretty big dip. Holy shit, I'm actually surprised by that. It blends really well. <laughs> I'm not used to that, you know? Because visual redness is a little, little less, you know? Wow, I was, I'm actually shocked by that. Okay, tattoos, I did. But I did, I could do, well, no, there's no body to tattoos because you're not gonna see the body, okay. Might give a scar. 
after all these years, you know, I think he might have gotten a scar or two. I like that, I like that, looks, that works. Okay, so I just had something to eat, and while I was eating, I was looking at my character and, about my Inquisitor, and um, I'm not happy with the jaw yet. I need to adjust it a little bit. Yeah, you know, if I made some very, very small changes, but it actually is enough for me to be happy with it now. Yeah, yeah. This is my Inquisitor. Let's accept that. Yeah, this is right. This is correct. This is Clay. Uh, so let's give him the name Clay. And like I say, said, not Clayton, Clay. It's good to see you again. Wrong. It's good to see you again. There he is. I won't let this stand. <sighs> we need to move. Oh, this is wild. It can't end like this. It's so nice to hear his voice again. Like, this is my Inquisitor. This is Clay. It's good to see you again. I won't let this stand. We need to move. Fuck yeah, this is him. Okay. Okay, the Inquisitor, full name, Clay Lavellan, Lineage Elf. I just realized, by the way, also while I was eating, I want facial hair on my rook, I think. So I can't be elf, be an elf. So I think I'm actually going to do the boring thing and make them a human. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I think that's what I gotta do. Uh, Inquisitor Lavellan came from an elven clan in the wilderness. An able hunter, his skills were put to the test, battling demons and other monsters as head of the Inquisition. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And now, the world state. Okay, time for romance. I romanced Dorian. Shocking absolutely no one, I feel like. Well, well, no, I feel like, obviously there's also Ironbow, but... Oh, I... Roman story and fuck Colin. Oh, now can imagine because Colin's here. Fuck Colin. I hate Colin so much. Honestly, it's like a little bit of a red flag anytime you find out someone likes Colin or well loves Colin, not likes. It's fine if you like his character. It's like, eh. but anytime I find out someone loves Colin or romanced Colin, I'm always a. It's always a little bit of a red flag. <laughs> Not in a really serious way, to be clear, but a little bit. I gotta be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I just despise that man. Like, I cannot... Things that he says in Origins and 2, there are certain things that I will not be able to ever be able to get out of my head. Like, I can't look at him without thinking about it. And, you know, when you dislike a when I dislike a character, and I then found out, find out that on top of that, the voice actor is an awful person, like with Colin. That only makes my hate for that character worse. But if I like a character, usually it doesn't really affect it because the character is separate, so separate because I like them. So it's easy for me to, it, well, it's not easy, it's easier for me to separate it. And I'm hoping that's what's gonna happen with Davern because if you didn't know, let's get into this really quick. Uh, Davern's voice actor follows some pretty 
disgusting people and accounts um, on social media. Like, things where there's no innocent way to, like... Like, there's no explanation that isn't like, oh yeah, you're awful. Like, because there's so many, and like, two of them being like, Andrew Tate and um, Lips of TikTok, so... Yeah. Like, with romances for my rook, I am gonna keep my options open. Like, obviously, the, the three people who I'm like, yeah, these are my options. Although, who knows? Maybe I'll fall in love with one of the other characters so much I'll do them. But the options for me are like, are Davrin, Emric, and Lucanus. Um, but like, I am feeling like, it kind of depends. Because like, I don't know if Davrin is going to be a real option for me. Well, I mean, we'll see if I fall in love with his character or not. And it, it's enough to separate it for me. But it's like, it's hard because I'm playing as a non-binary character. I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to not think about it anytime that comes up in any way. Anytime Davern uses they them pronouns for my character or maybe talk maybe talks about my character being non-binary. Like anytime anything like that happens, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to not think about it. So that could it it it's hard to know until we actually get into the game. So we'll see. But I just wanted to bring that up just because it's I don't know, it's worth saying. But yeah, I hate Cullen. <laughs> That's how we started that. <laughs> uh, okay, so I wrote my Dorian, of course. So, Dorian. When the Northern Mage came to the Inquisition looking for help, he discovered a love enduring and rare. Yeah. <clears throat> Born and raised in the Tevinter Imperium, Dorian hadn't thought he'd find much to impress him when he traveled south. But as he and the Inquisitor became drawn to each other, their attraction bloomed into a deep and caring relationship that endured even after Dorian reluctantly returned home. Yeah, they keep in touch, of course. <laughs> um, bad romance, definitely, you know, at the start, I definitely d didn't think that I was gonna romance him because of some of the things he says about slavery specifically, a especially while my Inquisitor is an elf. It was a little bit of a, uh, uh, like, like Dorian had a had a very privileged life in Tevinter. Uh, before, you know, everything went down with his father. Uh, because like at the start of the game, he literally is like, yeah, well, I guess I never really thought about you know, the slavery is like bad or whatever. It's pretty, it's pretty bad. Um, but, you know, things change throughout the story. You like. Yeah, you get through it. So it's, it's 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 a lot. I I recommend just playing it. It's Inquisition is great. Um, but yeah, romance story on. Um, fuck, I was gonna say something. Oh yeah. Um, I mentioned that uh, of the spoilers. I'll I'll talk about the like, appearance as a character spoiler because, yes, one of the ones that got spoiled for me that is gonna appear. In this game is Dorian, which I'm happy about. Uh, maybe it's even best that it's spoiled so that I don't sit there like thinking constantly, oh, is Dorian gonna show up? Oh my god, is Dorian? Oh no, he's not gonna show up. Oh, maybe he will though, you know? So at least that's done. And I did see one screenshot of him, and I'm unsure how I feel, and I won't know how I feel until I actually see him in the game with his voice and everything. So that's one. The second character I got spoiled for making an appearance, this is a big one kind of bigger because it's been longer since they appeared so if you don't want to know this one i don't know skip like i'll i'll like mark this chapter as like spoilers okay so if you just skip this section this chapter you'll be good ready okay there we go uh the second one i got spoiled about is isabella which i'm excited about isabella returning finally i love isabella um and I did see a screenshot of her, and she looks great. I'm not unsure how I feel there. She looks amazing. <laughs> but with her, I saw a few screenshots circling around, because that which specifically has to do with the other third spoilers. I might just talk about that right now too. So this will just be the spoiler section. Um, so this is the final spoiler I got. Which yeah, it, this spoiler is the reason that I saw 
several screenshots of Isabella. Um, and that is that one of the companions, Tash, is non-binary. And I pretty, I pretty, we pretty much knew this, but it was kind of like an uncertain thing because it was weird. Because like, I think the game director and maybe some other people referred to Tash with they, them pronouns. And then Trick Weeks uh, referred to them with she, her, and said that Tash uses she, her pronouns. Which I get why now. It makes sense now. It's that Tash isn't like out fully or like to everyone. Like it's not, I think at the start of the game, and it's like a thing that you discover as their story goes on. So like, because I know this, obviously not, I'm just going to use they, them for them. So just to be clear. Uh, so, but that's like the biggest spoiler that I know was just that Tash is non-binary, which isn't that big of a shock. But uh, yeah, so obviously that reveal, whatever is uh, not gonna be a thing for me, but that's literally it. That's all I know, so that's great. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I know about stuff that we see in trailers. Like, I know that um, Morrigan appears, which is exciting. Although, I'm not convinced yet that it's Morrigan. I'm not 100% convinced it's actually Morrigan. Like, I know it's, like, Morrigan's uh, physical, like, body and voice, but I don't think... I don't, I'm not sure if it's actually Morrigan. Also, I saw some people talking about how they don't think it really looks like Morrigan or whatever. Or, wait, I saw one person say it. And, um... That's obviously fair, like, if you don't feel like it looks like the Morgan you picture in your head, that's fine. But I, I don't get that, personally. I think it looks... I think... I just... I saw her and I was like, yeah, that's Morgan. That is Morgan. That's how she looks, you know? This is, like, the natural, like, evolution of, like, more realistic, like, more detailed facial features and appearance. Like, that looks like Morgan. Like, when I think about Morgan, what, I, what I've seen in the trailers is pretty much exactly what I envision. When I think about Morrigan, um, like if I haven't looked at Inquisition or Origins in a while, and I think about Morrigan, that's kind of what I see. So it's more accurate to my brain, I guess. <laughs> but everyone obviously thinks different, so I get it. Um, but yeah, those were all the spoilers I saw. So let's keep going here. So I wrote my story. And... Now this one is interesting because I genuinely did not remember. And I'm not even 100% sure if this is correct, what I'm going to say now, but um, I'm, I am I had like a memory that I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure I know this one, which one it is, but that is the fate of the Inquisition. The Inquisition grew too powerful too quickly for the comfort of the world's greatest kingdoms. They called the council, demanding it to be brought to heal. So originally I thought that I had kept the Inquisition and giving it to the Chantry, but then I was like, giving it to the Chantry? Why would I? I wouldn't do that. I hate the Chantry. Why would I give it to the Chantry? That doesn't make any sense. Why did I do that? That's because I didn't. I don't think. I think I disbanded it. I think that the reason I was confused is because when the Trespasser DLC started and they were talking about like disbanding, I was like, what? No, we're doing great things. Like, what do you mean? I was like, oh, obviously we're keeping it. So I, I was like so sure I wanted to keep the Inquisition for like a large portion of Trespasser. Like so sure, like it wasn't even a thing. Um, that like... And I don't think I decided that I was gonna disband it until I actually got the choice. That's when I was really like, you know what, after seeing all this, yeah, we're disbanding it. So I think that's why I was confused because um, for most of it, I did think I was gonna, I wanted to keep it. Uh, but like, I, I wouldn't have given it to the Chantry. Like that's not something I would do. So definitely disband. So. Disbanded. The Inquisition was formally disbanded. The Inquisitor made a rare decision to give up power before it was corrupted any further. He saw that the Inquisition had grown so large, it had become easy for others to misuse the many resources at its disposal. The Inquisitor disbanded it all and let his people choose new paths of their own. By the way, this video is already so long. This is like this is why I, yeah, definitely the correct creation needs to be one video. <laughs> Which I'm cool with. Okay. Now it's time for Solus, um, the hidden god. When Solus told the Inquisitor he intended to merge the physical world and the Fade, he admitted this would cause death and destruction. Despite insisting there was no other way, Solus did not relish the cost in lives. I vowed to save Solus from himself. Because I I loved Solus. I, I, I think he's great. I think he was a great character, and my Inquisitor had a real friendship with him. Like... Like, I remember um, feeling like 
Solus was his closest friend, the closest platonic friend was Solus in the game. Because I remember how upset I was over everything, like, over, like, the betrayal and, like, him leaving and stuff like that. Without, you know, without saying goodbye, without saying where he was going. Like, I remember being really upset about that because that's, like, my Inquisitor's closest friend. Um, and so, yeah, I vowed to save Solas from himself. Um, obviously, I don't agree with what Solas is doing, like, all the destruction and death it will cost. Cost. But, like, I guess, I guess I get how he would get to that conclusion from his experiences and his life and his, like, unique existence with, like, being a god, Edlin God, well, it's not, it's not like, they're not, like, actually gods, but, um, you know what I mean, like, with how long he's existed, with what he's seen, I can understand how he would get to that point, but I want to stop him and I want to save him from himself, because I and my Inquisitor deeply careful of Solas. So, yeah. Vowed to save Solas from himself. Solas vanished in order to put his plans into motion. The Inquisitor refused to give up on him. The Inquisitor believed he saw genuine regret in Solas, and that he didn't truly want to go through with his plans. He vowed to save his friend from dooming both the world and himself. The Inquisitor's influence had diminished, but he still had contacts who began searching for the dreadful. Exactly. So here we go. There's my Inquisitor. Um, Frederick Roman, Stor Dorian, yeah. Fate of the Inquisition disbanded. Both vowed, and God vowed to save Solas from himself. So, yeah, that's all correct. That's all done. Here we go. I really hope, I'm worried, I'm scared that if I go back here, it's going to remove my Inquisitor. I have the video so I can literally just go through and recreate it with the percentages. Uh, but I am scared, I'm not going to lie. I am really scared. <laughs> oh god, oh god. Oh god, okay, hold let's, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh god, I was terrified for a second, but yeah. It's saved. Thank God. Thank you for not making that horribly designed. I mean, I still think it's a bit badly designed. Like, I think the this bit right here should be available from, like, appearance, too. You should be able to just do it there. Like, you shouldn't have to go all the way to the end there. But, like, I get it, but you know what I mean. But yeah, I'm gonna be a boring, boring human. I know, I know. I guess it's a decent start. Uh... But yeah, they, them, non-binary. Now, we come to a really fun part, because I'm not recreating anyone. I'm just creating a brand new character. I might get really quiet here. And also here we got, like, lighting options, which is cool. Which, it's kind of weird that we didn't get that for Inquisitor. But I guess it kind of works, because we didn't get that in Inquisition. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I might, I don't know if I will, but I might get really quiet here as I, like, focus on making the character. Since it's a brand new character. Sure. Uh, oh, let's. There might be some makeup on them, so let's let's remove all that. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's do the colors first, so that it's easier to get what I want. <laughs> uh, so, like, like I said, I'm gonna kind of match it to me a bit. Uh, I guess this this is the hard part I need to like because I have like warm light on my face like this is it's a warm color but I am like extremely pale because I don't go outside like I feel like maybe this is even like really accurate this right here It might even do cold, but I kind of want warm just because it feels a bit like, I don't know, like I don't want, I, I don't want it to be cold, I want a, at least warm undertone, barely. Or is that tied to melanin? Does it even make a difference without it? 
I think it doesn't. Like if I give my character melanin, then then it makes a difference. Also, I might just do cold just to be more accurate. But yeah, with melon, yeah, that looks more like yeah, accurate. Yeah, yeah. It's not gonna be perfect because I'm not trying to make it like perfectly exactly the same, but just similar enough that you know you can kind of see like the pieces of me in the character, but they're not gonna look like me again. Just that's not what I'm doing. I think I might want to do freckles. I don't think I want to do this one, though. It's, I'm so pale, it looks a bit... Mm. But this one could do. Me. Actually, this is more me. Like, this kind of dark circle. This is definitely more me. But I don't want to give my rook dark circles, I don't think. At least not like that. I think I do want to give the uh, freckles like this one. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Also, they have a bit of Lago Slider there, which is really cool, just like Welsh Gate 3 did. Oh, right, because I'm so, yeah, pale. You can see here. Wait, let me just show it, because it's really cool. Let's see. Oh, and then this is like the amount, just like, I mean, pretty much exactly like in Baldur's Gate. I like, I love it. I love it. I think it's really cool. Obviously, you can't place exactly where you want it to appear on the face, which is too bad, but, you know, like, it's, it's really cool. It's really, I don't know. Like, I even think it's a bit better. I don't want to talk about Baldur's Gate 3 too much, because I know it's, like, annoying, uh, but... I think even think this is a bit better than that is in Baldur's Gate 3. I feel like you have a little bit more control. Which is cool. Okay. Right, all the colors, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so eye color. Which I kind of have like hazel, but I, I'm too lazy to actually... Wait, I, I maybe I have a picture actually on my phone of my eyes. Because sometimes I'll take a picture randomly because I'm like, wait, what eye color do I have? Hmm. Wonder. I, mean, I could literally just zoom up, zoom in on any image of me, and that's that works, you know. It's like okay, it's like a deep green sort of. Okay. Hmm. It's kind of like it's kind of like this color, but like bright. No, no, not that, not that. Kind of like this one. It's like. Have so much control, it's awesome. I like that. I think uh, if I can also get this one to be kind of like that. This is pretty close, honestly. That's what I'm looking at right now. My out, I feel like my eyes are slightly bloodshot, so I can do that too for Rook. <laughs> not that much though, it's like, not that much either, like a little bit. Like 25% I'd say, kind of. I don't know. Maybe even more, I don't know. I want to put a tiny bit of this because I feel like it helps get closer to my eyes. It just, just like a slight bit, like 15%. That helps with the appearance. Yeah, okay. I feel like this is the closest I'll be able to get. <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time just the, on the eye color. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, I can 
Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. I think that's good. Okay. And now it's time for the hair color. Well, let's do the eyebrow shape and eye. Eyebrow shape it can be whatever. I don't want that to be like accurate, but eyebrow color. Obviously, I'm I'm ginger, but in the dark, it's like not as ginger. Obviously, it's like say it's like probably like like that would be the eyebrows probably. I have to guess, uh, without looking at a picture that I just had up on my phone. <laughs> um, no idea what hair I'm gonna go for, so let's just. Oof. It's probably, yeah, I'm like in the dark, it can look something like, like this. This has like strong lights on it, so you know. Like, let's see. In the sunlight? Oh no, no, no! It's much brighter, light brighter in the sunlight. It's a very like bright orange. Like I would say, like a little less. Like, yeah, I would say my hair probably looks something like this in the sunlight. Yeah. Like, this is definitely way more accurate in the sun. Yeah, let's see in the different lights again. Okay. Oh, yeah, see here, it looks kind of brownish. Perfect. Yeah, okay, this is perfect. This is perfect. Ooh. Oh, I love how much control you have. I love it. Okay. And facial color. I want to match that to the hair, but like I'll probably make it darker later. Let's see, I'm not giving facial hair yet. Uh. Okay. Now we can. Now I can start creating this person. Let's see. What do I want? Honestly, this might be a really good start. Let's do that. I think that's a good starting point. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, no, that is head shape. Okay, gotcha. Complexion. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. Uh, forehead and brow. Here we go. Okay. Time to lock in. Kind of hard to mess around with the eyebrows when I don't know which eyebrows I'm going for yet, but I think that's a good start at least. I'm really liking this face I made, like the with using the blend thing. I was right. I do. I did get quiet. I probably dis disappeared for a while from the screen. <laughs> the chin. The chin bump. A little bit, I guess. 
What's great about Rook though is that it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. If I don't like something, I can just change it. So it's not the biggest deal. Yeah, the fact that even this little, little short hair has movement, so much movement. Like, the hell? Love it. I really like this face. <laughs> Keep saying it, but it's I'm just so impressed by it. Oh no. The hell? But I haven't made any changes to the body presets is the thing. The body preset? Sure, like I haven't done anything to it, so whatever. Well I did want to check like how big exactly you can make a character, because this is obviously the biggest preset, so that's one you should use to check it. Yeah, you know, see, this is really good. Like, this is definitely the best we've ever gotten out of Dragon Age, for sure. But, like, I'm trying to think of any other, like, big, like, RPGs like this, like, with choices and everything. Like, I can't, I can't think of a single one where you could even do this, you know? It's really cool. Um, I mean, I might actually use this body preset. Body proportions. I don't know if I want my to be like that. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> yes, I'm doing those the highest. <laughs> Mind your business. Um Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing though that I found out about and realized it's like you can't have body hair which is kind of wild like I don't know if that's just like an oversight that they didn't think about it or if they just decided against it it's that that is a bit of a bummer I think I think it would have been cool to be able to do that hmm what about height do I want my character to be short yeah you know I think I would do want my character to be character to be as short as possible I think I like that I like the idea of my character being really short my rook being short <laughs> And yeah, I'm happy with this body. I think it's look. I think it looks nice. Yeah. <sighs> so good. Obviously, the face is not entirely done, but so good. Okay, eye shape. Obviously, now we're we are way past trying to make it look like me. To be clear, so. I'm not trying to like flatter myself into thinking I look like this. I mean, I like my face. I'm not insecure about my face. I think like that sounds like I am, but no, it's just like, I know people get weird. If you say like, oh, I'm trying to base it off myself in a way. And then they think it looks so much more attractive than them. And they're like, oh, really? I want to make it clear. Yeah, I think I like those eyes. They're nice. Okay, let's... I think I want to finish with the facial features before I do eyebrows and eyelashes. So let's do nose. Okay.
yeah, lips are definitely like tight. Shape is definitely tied to faces because I like these lips better, like a general shape better than the ones from Inquisitor. But I think I made them look nice enough in the end for the Inquisitor that I'm fine with it. Oh, these are so nice. Holy shit. So cute. I don't want my rook to be smiling all the time, though. I want a more neutral, neutral face, like, like, like that. I want like a, like a bit of a resting bitch face, you know. Yeah. I really like this face. Like this is the finished face face now, unless I decide to change some stuff. So nice. Okay, ears, and then I'll go back to. Eyebrows and eyelashes. Now ears. I really like these ears, so I, I don't think I'm gonna do anything too dramatic. Maybe make them a little bigger. Five percent. Yeah, I like those ears. Earlobe size. Like that, I guess. Yeah. Depth, 45, negative 45 is where it's at. I guess I can keep it there. Nah, thank you. Look at how the hair moves with the ear. You see, that is so fucking cool. Are you kidding me? Genuinely, what the fuck? So cool. Okay. There we go. Okay, now it's time for eyebrows and eyelashes. <laughs> How long is this video? Holy shit, it's almost three hours. Are you kidding me? And it's just character creation. <laughs> I mean, you know, when I like, you know how people always say, like, oh, I spent like so long in all the character creation. Oh my god. I actually really do that. Because <laughs> as for every time. I'm watching someone play a game and they're like, oh, I spent so long time, so, such a long time in character creation. And it's like, you get to the end of it and it's like, oh, you spent like an hour and a half at most. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and that's while interacting with chat, like in a live stream. So, I don't know. I, sh I was finding it funny because I'm like, oh, I wish that was me taking a long time. <laughs> Like, I'm gonna spend a lot of time on, like, makeup and stuff, because I want to do glitter stuff. Yeah, this is quite a... quite a ride. The eyebrows do I want? Oh, those are nice. Those are nice. No thin eyebrows, please. Oh, these are kind of... This remind me of Jahira. From... Polish Gate. Specifically Polish Gate 3, because I I don't remember I played a little bit of Polish Gate 1 and 2. I do need to sit down one day and really play them fully. Uh but I don't remember if she has these. But she has eyebrows like this in uh, three. Ones they really like 18. I think I might go with those and like adjust them a little bit in um, forehead and brow with like inner position and stuff. I'm a little more serious. You know? No, I really like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. 
and finally eyelashes. And then we move on to hair, I believe. Ooh. Okay. Uh. Wait, what are these? 31. Of course, real nice, but I think that's like, that might be exactly what I gave my Inquisitor. That doesn't really matter, I guess. It's fine if it's the same. Seven's nice. Oh, nine is nice. Whoa. These are some really nice options. Like, I, I remember the eyelash options in Inquisition. A mess. Yeah, I think I pretty much decided on 29. I do want to do some mascara here. Get a little darker. Like 60, I think. Get a little more even. Even 70. Okay. Nice. All right. Yeah, now it's here. <gasps> what do we want to do then? Because I can't. This is really nice, but I can't do this because that's the Inquisitor. I want to. I don't want to have the same hair size as the Inquisitor. It's very nice. Reminds me of. Oh, fuck. I'm still doing it. Lazel from Baldur's Gate Three. <laughs> What am I gonna do? Like, it reminds me of her, so I have to say it. Ew. I've already seen all the hairstyles many times, like, months ago. Not months ago, I think it was like, last month, maybe. They got to show that off. Character creators, uh, content creators, stuff like that. So I've seen all the hairs. They're all super nice. Which is why I'm not going through every single one of them. It's already taken long enough. Uh. This is a really nice hairstyle. The one that I've been using. <gasps> Ooh! I got it to happen. I'm trying to get it over shoulder because it's like, but I guess it, that's just to show it off. Gotcha. Okay. Wait, I kind of love this, to be honest. Like, I kind of really like how this looks right here. Like, I might start off with this, to be honest. Yeah, I, that actually really speaks to me. I don't know. Just, just this front here and like this detail is nice. And then I can change up things after different. Uh, change things up later. Oh, facial hair, right. I wanted to look at that. To be completely honest, currently it's like in these two. Maybe I should just do makeup and stuff first and then see if I like the facial hair on top of it. It's probably a better idea. Yeah, let's start with eyeshadow. I will eye makeup. Uh, 
Okay, what do we do? Hmm. Let's make these drastically different colors. It's easier to see. Pink and uh, turquoise sort of blue. I think because like at the start I know you were like a pretty pretty like worn down armor. I think maybe I want to go for something a little bit more basic at the start. I'm also get some better stuff. Maybe then I go for something more extravagant. But let's see color. Hmm. I don't want to go for. Here. Maybe I go for like pink or something. Hmm. Or purple. Ooh, wait. Why do I love that? Like with the pink on top of it, like this? It'll make it more vibrant. I kinda love that. What the hell? Wait, that's so cute. I love that. So lip makeup. I don't know how I feel about the glitter until I see it really in game. Or maybe I just need to look at it in different lighting. Hmm. It's pretty cute. Like, I might change it. I might decide that I don't really like it after seeing it for a bit in the game. But for right now, I like it. Ooh. It looks so good. I don't think I'm going to give them any blush. I'll skip that. Oh right, I wanted to check if facial hair, how I feel about facial hair now that I have the makeup on. Honestly, this one's really good too, honestly. I didn't even really, really think about it. This could work. I don't know. I want that. No, I really like this, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I- Oh, I really like this, actually. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. We're almost done. We're almost done. Well, almost. We have, like, all the backstory and everything. And I want to read all of them so I can make a more informed choice. Like, the full backstory thing when you select one. I want to read all of them so I can- Because I don't know which one to choose. Oh my god. Okay. Tattoos. Oh, do, do I want any? I don't know. But also a cool thing about the tattoos is that you can... Okay, you like... Oh, I really like that one, but oh god, these ruin it. Remove them. There you go. It's so cool. It is so cool. And it's even more in-depth with the body tattoos. Unfortunately, I, when I watch some people like create their their rooks, 
unfortunately they did not realize that the user were like oh it's too much i don't like that you know like this one for example i personally why did it zoom out so far jesus christ oh that's weird i personally love that but i don't like these so there i go that's just what i wanted but i don't want that for my rook but you know what i mean this is obviously like um, more watch like uh, Necromance, Navara style tattoos. Oh, so maybe because there are like things tied to factions, maybe I'll choose a faction and then choose a tattoo because I don't know which faction I'm going to do. So let's do scars and then return to tattoos later and same with paint. Uh, Maybe I won't get to have any scars. Although honestly, this is also something that could be determined by um what faction and backstory I get. So maybe I sh I just leave this entire tab until I've chosen that. So yeah. Okay, the basic appearance of my rook is done. Oh yeah, the zooming thing, I did something to fuck it up. Did I accidentally call them my tab at one point? I hope not. That's kind of embarrassing. Okay. Oh my god. Oh wait, I'm really happy with how they look. Look at them. I'm actually so happy with it. And obviously I'm being a mage. But, okay, this is Grey Ward and stuff, so. This is the starting outfit no matter what for each class. And then we got casual for Grey Wardens. Let me look at this mage stuff. Okay. Mage specialization. Oh, you can see the specializations right here. Okay, cool. Uh, mages can specialize in specific forms of combat. We got Death Caller. Embrace the dark, drain life from enemies, and cast spells that writhe with the essence of death itself. Got a little video of it. Ooh. Oh, no, this is Evoker. Evoker, call the void, freeze enemies in their tracks, and then summon the deepest cold to tear them apart. And this is Spellblade. Be the storm channel potent spells for close quarters combat infused with lightning's wrath. Spellblade sounds really exciting, actually. Because I don't have to be ranged at all times. Yeah, I like that. Oh, right, also, surname. I don't know what my name is going to be. I just know it's going to start with a C for my rook. Uh, okay, we got Grey Wardens. Uh... An ancient military order sworn to battle Darkspawn and other monsters. The Wardens undergo secret, unbreakable rites that grant them supernatural powers against the Dark. Now, the Grey Wardens are interesting for me because I have some issues specifically with what they tell don't tell the people they recruit. Which is about, like, the, um, I don't remember what it's called right now, but, the, you know, the ritual to make them Grey Wardens? where they can literally fucking die because they're, they like, drink Darkspawn blood. That shit is fucked. And I just, I remember I felt so fucking horrible for that guy who got scared because he didn't know what was gonna, he didn't know they were gonna fucking do a ritual where he might fucking die. And he wanted out and they killed him. Like, the thing is, plenty of people would sign up even if you tell them that joining a gray, the Grey Wardens has a chance of killing them. Like making that clear, a lot of people would still want to join. In fact, maybe even more people because they're like, I'll survive, you know? It's just, it was just fucked and I just, I, I don't know. I have a problem with that aspect of it. <laughs> uh, Bonded in Blood, gain reputation with the Grey Wardens more quickly. So reputation is a thing. I'm, I'm wondering what that's going to do and how that's going to work. Blight Killer. Deal increased damage versus Dark Spawn. And Vigilant Training. Base defen defense and health are slightly increased. That's cool, but I'm not going to be a Great Warden. That much I know. I don't want to be a Great Warden. Last name is really cool, though. Thorn. Ooh. It just looks so good on them. Uh, so we got Veil Jumpers, which the surname is Aldware. Uh, Rook is a veil jump. This daring group explores ancient elven ruins in Arlathan Forest. Although founded by elves, they welcome anyone brave enough to face Arlathan's reality warping magic. 
close to the veil, gain reputation with the veil jumpers more quickly, attune strikes, deal increased damage versus fade touched, keen eye, deal slightly increased critical and weak point damage. Now this is intriguing. Like, I am interested in this, but I don't know. And this is um, the casual wear. Not as good as the aspirational armor. Now we got Shadow Dragons. This is the one that I f feel like I will want to do. Um, but it really depends on all the full backstories. I still want to go through and read all of them after I've read the basic stuff. Because um, that might determine something else. But this is surname Murkar. I think that's how you, how you say that. Very close to Mercer. <laughs> Um, but, oh, but this this aspirational armor is so fucking nice. I love it. I'm not the biggest fan of this um, of this uh, casual wear, but it's nice still. It's the same one as um, the Inquisitor. Obviously, it, honestly, it looks really good on Rook. I guess that's fine. But I think you can change it anyway, so it's fine. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't read this. Uh, this underground resistance opposes corrupt rulers and slavery into Venter. Coming from all walks of life, they are determined to bring justice to the people. So yeah, that's very appealing to me, so that's why I feel like I I'll, might choose this one. It depends on the backstory. Um, light in the dark. Gain reputation quickly, more quickly with Shadow Dragons. And never to rise. Deal increased damage versus Venatori. Resourceful. Your class-specific resource regenerates slightly faster. I don't know what the class-specific resource is. And we got Lords of Fortune. Damn. <laughs> this is where you get to be a little slutty, which I love. Like, look at- Oh my god, this looks so good. <gasps> Whoa. Oh my god, this looks so good. Like, just seeing them in this outfit makes it tempting. Oh my god, okay. Uh, Lords of Fortune. An informal collection of explorers, hunters, and treasure seekers from Ravain. The rowdy lords are famed for both daring exploits and narrow escapes. Together in glory, gain reputation with the Lords of Fortune more quickly. Healthy competition, deal increased damage versus mercenaries. That's interesting. Relentless, perform takedowns on enemies with slightly less effort. And it's surname Ladir. Ladir. It's cool. Hmm. Hmm. Don't know how I feel about this, but I mean, it's nice, but. Hmm. Actually, it's really nice. <laughs> uh, the more watch. Okay, and what's the. Mm. Oh, their their butt looks pretty nice in this, actually. Damn, that's cool. <laughs> uh, this elite necromantic order explores the mysteries of life and death, and tends to the undead in Navarra's sprawling grand necropolis. Oh, I forgot I want to talk about something when I was looking at the fucking, uh, like, world state, and uh, this Navarra thing reminded me of Cassandra and um, how I, I I think I think it's weird I think it's pretty strange that we didn't get a choice for the divine like yeah sure we can just mention divine Victoria because that's their names no matter what um, but I just think but I feel like it confirms that Cassandra Leliana and Vivian will not appear neither none of them will appear because all of them can be the divine at the end of inquisition so how would they have them appear without mentioning that oh right i'm i'm the divine hello you know unless maybe it's a choice in the game that you can make i don't know because because uh i did hear that there's like one choice but i think it's like specific to the inquisitor one choice that you actually get to make in the game. But I, I don't know. I don't know anything about that choice, what it even is about. How, like, I don't know. It would be weird if that's just the Divine, but maybe it is. Maybe it is, I don't know. Um, but okay, oh, that surname is Ingelvar. Hmm. Uh, recognized name. Gain reputation with more watches more quickly. Uh, return to the grave. Deal increased damage versus undead and demons. Hmm, double. Acute afflictions. You can apply an additional affliction stack on targets. And anti even crows. Oh, I love this armor. Like, this is definitely, like, a big contender for me, too. Like, it's really... Like, from the start, it really felt like it was going to be, like, a... Toss-up between Shadow Dragons and anti even crows. But Lords of Fortune and Veil Jumper is also really tempting. 
I don't think I want to do... I don't want to do Great Wardens. And I don't think I want to do Morn March. But everyone else, it's like, I don't know. This is such a nice aspirational armor. armor. And the surname is Deriva. And it's such a nice casual wear, too. Okay. And even crows. Uh, Swift knives in the dark. The crows are ruthless assassins, both respected and feared as Antiva's shadowy projector projectors, protectors. Under their wing, gain reputation with the Antiva crows more quickly. Open contract, deal increased damage versus on Tom. On Tom? I actually don't remember what that is exactly. Wait, I can, maybe I can just Google it actually. Oh my god, I opened it, it was like my eye immediately. I was like, oh right, my eye color. <laughs> Oh, the military of the Canari. Okay, right. Oh, I knew that, I knew that. I just forgot. Uh, and Hidden Pouch holds an extra po extra potion, which that is really nice. That's really tempting. But let's let's just go through it and read all the backstories. Obviously, I'm not going to do Grey Warden, but I'm interested in what the backstory is. Uh, shield against the night. When innocent lives were at stake, Rook led the charge, saving a village from a monstrous nightmare, no matter the cost to themselves. During a large darkspawn incursion, Rook was ordered to hold the line with other Grey Wardens until reinforcements arrived. Oh, one thing though, I'm so glad it says themselves, because sometimes when games uh, do pronouns, do they them pronouns, they'll have it be themselves instead of themselves. And I know some people like doing that like saying that I, like I, I know that isn't like something nobody does whatever but um a lot more commercial to do themselves and that's how I prefer it so it, I don't know it's nice to see that it's they did that you know <laughs> whatever uh sorry um during a large dark spawn incursion Rook was ordered to hold a line with other gray wardens until reinforcements arrived Rook argued that by then villagers under attack would be dead they disobeyed orders, leading the squad into the incursion and sealing the tunnel to the deep roads. Ooh. This turned the tide, and the Darkspawn were driven off, which saved the villagers. Rook's heroism was popular among the younger wardens, but others with connections to noble families resented their independent streak. Rook chose to step away while tempers cooled. Wait, that backstory actually makes the Grey Wardens a contender. Because Rook isn't just like following orders. They're like, they were like ordered to hold the line and like let the villagers die. And they were like, fuck no, I'm disobeying that and I'm, I'm saving them. Like, no, that actually makes me maybe want to pick, maybe want to pick Grey Wardens actually. Like actually really, really want to, but let's see the other ones. Hunter of Secrets. When lives were at stake, Rook defied orders to rescue people from the mystic perils of Arlathan. Okay, that's pretty similar, but let's see. On an expedition to ruins in Arlathan Forest, the Veil Jumpers found ruins that contained important lost lore and deadly danger. Uh, barely surviving the ruins' ancient magical defenses, Rook's small team recovered an invaluable map leading to a hidden area of the forest. Although the team escaped, other Veil Jumpers found themselves trapped. Rook chose to return to the ruins, saving their teammates' lives, but losing the map. They were lauded for their bravery, but the map's loss caused some resentment among Veil Jumper leaders. Ooh. And that one didn't say that Rook left to let Tempers cool, so I guess that's a different thing then. Okay, Shadow, Dra Shadow Dragons. Breaker of Bonds. Rook risked everything to liberate the enslaved people of Tevinter, even knowing it, it would anger the ruling elite. Like some of that. The foundling Rook was adopted into a military family. Mm. Okay. And joined the Shadow Dragons to fight from the shadows for change in Menrathus. While guarding a visiting dignitary who was investigating a slavery ring in the nearby city of Nessus, Rook concluded that the mission would fail without throwing caution to the wind. Alone, they sneaked into they sneaked the dignitary deep into Venatory controlled zones and brought him back along with the rescued slaves. These actions brought Rook to the Venatori's attention, and the Shadow Dragons decided to keep Rook out of sight. Oh, cool. That's cool. Okay, Lords of Fortune. Seeker of gold and glory. When a corrupt Ravani noble double-crossed Rook, 
Rook escaped a collapsed ruin, collapsing ruin, sorry, turned the tables and destroyed a dangerous artifact. A rising lord of fortune, skilled at breaking into lost tombs and ruins, Rook killed a corrupt Ravani noble to prevent an ancient evil from being given to the Venatori. Their actions were correct and saved the lives of expedition, of, of expedition members, but some Ravani nobles were resentful because the success of the Lord's expeditions relied on Ravani authorities looking the other way. It seemed wise for Rook to step away while temper settled. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do Lords of Fortune. That was good, but I don't think I'm going to. Morn Watch. Defender of the Dead. When restless spirits threatened the inhabitants of the Grand Necropolis, Rook took divisive ac decisive action to protect both the living and the dead. Discovered by undead inside a Grand Necropolis tomb as an infant. Whoa. Okay, this one's interesting. Discovered by un... I mean, a lot of them are interesting, but this is like... Huh. Discovered by undead inside a Grand Necropolis tomb as an infant, Rook was raised by Mornwatch necromancers, eventually joining the Order. That's interesting. I like that. During a civil war... Civil war by und between undead nobility, known later as the War of the Banners, they led a daring attack on the rebellion's dueling leaders. It was a success, quelling the war and saving lives. But Rook's destruction of these undead nobles was controversial. Some Morn Watchers feared Rook had offended the Order's aristocratic patrons and encouraged them to travel for a while. That's really interesting, actually. Hmm. And the crows, finally. Assassin extraordinaire. When the invaders of Treviso took people captive, Rook was determined to free the prisoners at any cost. Hmm. A talented new crow, recently promoted to full membership, Rook chafed at the cautions of their commanders, especially with their, their city occupied by brutal soldiers known as the Antam. Uh, when Rook saw a patrol herding along captives one night, they leaped into action. Despite saving li lives, however, Rook had unknowingly compromised a larger crow operation against the Antam. Oh. Rook's superiors were incens incensed. Sidelined for their actions, the young assassins searched for new ways to prove themselves. Mm. Honestly, that one wasn't that interesting, so I don't think I'm going to do crows. That doesn't really call to me. Honestly, I feel like... Mornwatch... Honestly, it's it's between Grey Wardens, Veil Jumpers, Shadow Dragons, and Morn Watch. Hmm. Honestly, I don't think I'm interested enough in Veil Jumpers, so it'll it's Grey Wardens, Shadow Dragons, or Morn Watch. So because I can't decide, I'm having a hard time deciding. Also, okay. Hmm. I feel like maybe, uh, I don't think I want to do more much because I don't know enough about, like, uh, necromancy and stuff in the world of Thetis. So it feels, I don't know, it would feel weird. So it's between Grey Wardens and Shadow Dragons. Fucking hell. I didn't even think Grey Wardens was a contender, and now it's, it's final two. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I just really... This backstory really calls to me, like, going against command in order to save lives. I don't know, I just like that a lot. And this one is about liberating people, like, from slavery into venture. But it's, again, I don't know a lot. I don't know enough about, I feel like I don't know enough about Tevinter. I know a lot about it, but I don't know enough that I feel like, I don't know. It would feel like, I would feel like an imposter, I feel like, you know? Does that make sense? Like, I'm sure they will give me all the information I need. That's not the thing I mean. It's just like... I feel ill-suited to step into those shoes, if that makes sense. So, honestly... <laughs> I really... This was, like, one of the only ones... This was the only one that I was, like, sure I wasn't gonna do. And now I'm, I think I'm actually gonna do it. I'm gonna be a Grey Warden. Maybe that works, though. That I have problem with the problems with the Grey Warden Order and I am a Grey Warden, and I disobeyed orders and stuff, I feel like that works then. And this is nice, like... Like, I think that actually works really well. So, maybe it's perfect. And last name Thorn, I like last name, so... 
yeah let's go <laughs> okay uh and now place that was just a difficulty uh I generally suck at Dragon Age games, gameplay-wise. Like, I... I'm going to be so serious. There's not been a single Dragon Age game that I've played that I haven't needed mods for the difficulty. But, to be fair to myself, I haven't played any of these games for a significant amount of time since I uh, got diagnosed with ADHD and got put on medication for it. So, for all I know, the reason I sucked so much is because I didn't have the attention span, and, like, I couldn't focus enough to actually, like, learn the mechanics and get better at it. That isn't, like, it is entirely possible that, that is a reason. And plus, this is a brand new game. I'm sure they've, like, and, and the gameplay is also completely different, so I think I'm just going to do the regular adventure. I'm going to go for that, and you can change it at any time, so it's, like, fine. So let's do that. Okay, name. Let's do voice first. Uh. Time to get to work. <laughs> What's he been saying now? Well, we're not in trouble. This voice, um, let's move. Is actually um, Mr. Hands in Cyberpunk, and. Sex noises in Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> I believe Alex Jordan, I believe his name is. I hope that's correct. I think it is. Uh, but that's awesome. Let's move. I'm not sure who this is. I feel like. Oh, wait, I have written down like actor stuff. I have it written down. We've hit three hours, by the way. <laughs> Just for character creation. Um. I had the cast for Dutch, so I would remember. Oh yeah, this is the only voice actor that I didn't know. The Amer the American masculine. Masculine too. Huh. Well, we made it. I like the voice. Huh. Well, we made it. I am happy we're here. All of us. Hi. We'll be working together. I feel like this is probably going to be what I go for. It really suits them, I feel like. We can lend a hand. Okay. okay. We can lend a hand. This voice, uh, voice actor, played Nine Fingers Keen in Baldur's Gate 3. Who I, I love Nine Fingers, Nine Fingers Keen's voice, so that's amazing. <laughs> He's always got some story. Also, the pitch thing is cool. He's always got some story. <laughs> He's... <laughs> He's always got some story. And here we got Erika Ishi, and I think they're amazing. So this is really exciting. And the re most recent thing that I I've played with Erika Ishi in it is um It's a Stray Gods roleplay musical because they played uh, Hermes and they did a great job as Hermes, by the way. Such a good actor. Oh, shouldn't be a problem. Time to leave. <sighs> I think everyone's okay. They're great. Can't believe we finally have a moment alone. Oh. But I am going. I can't believe we finally have a moment alone. I'm happy to see you. It's all under control. Yeah, I think this is the voice I'm going for. Now, name, huh? Got like claw in my head. Like, just claw. Clawthorn. Wait, that's actually a good name. Clawthorn? <laughs> it's fun. Wait. I need to like look up Clawthorn because I'm always worried that my name is going to be like something that exists, you know? Well, there's the Owl House, like a last name that's Clawthorn. But that's like all I found. But I don't know if I want Claw because it's, I feel like it's like Clawthorn, you know? It's too much. But, um, wait, what about like Core? Just Core. Oh. Now, now I'm talking about C name. Like in Baldur's Gate 3, by the way, my character's name was Clover. 
which I liked. Um, but core, core thorn. Eh, I don't think that flows as well as, it as I wanted to. Core thorn, core thorn. Um, I was thinking like crow. No, that doesn't work as anti and crows. Crow thorn. That's a good name though. Um, cash thorn. Uh, crash. No. Kale. Uh, wait. Coral. Coral. Like coral. Coral. Coral thorn. Coral thorn. I think that's the problem there that I can't decide between coral or coral. Coral thorn. Cor coral thorn. Coral thorn. Mm. Maybe like Cory? Yeah, like Cory Thorn. Mm. I think I want two R's though. Cory Thorn. Mm. Do I want. It's hard though. Do I want one R or two? I think I want two. Cory Thorn. Yeah. I don't know why. I, it's like they're not going to say it ever, but you know. Oh yeah, this looks like a Cory Thorn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you know what, yeah. Yes, that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this, make sure it's right. Make sure it's all right. It is, okay. Yeah, sorry, I just wanna make sure because I don't want the Inquisitor to show up and it not be my Inquisitor. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that's true. Okay. All right. Here we got Rook. Full name, Cory Thorn. Lineage, human. And no boring. Identity, non-binary, they, them. Class, mage. Backstory, Grey Wardens. <laughs> How exciting. But also, this is where I'm ending this video. This isn't part one. This is character creation and, like, I guess, sort of... Uh, past Dragon Age discussion a little bit. So it was kind of just like a prep thing, because, you know, it's three and a half hours. <laughs> this is how seriously I take character creation. And you know, I feel like you wouldn't look at this character and think, yeah, that took three and a half hours. But it wasn't just making the character, it was also make, re recreating my Inquisitor, um, going through the world state sources, talking about everything, and choosing a backstory, choosing a class, it's everything like it was a lot <laughs> but i i wanted to make this a video for just for people who want to see the in-depth character creation but yeah i hope you enjoyed this uh character creation video if you did uh please remember to give this video a thumbs up uh leave me a comment if you have any thoughts questions or observations like whatever about like my opinions on stuff in the world or just i don't know anything <laughs> i don't know um and let me know what you chose i don't know I, i'm curious about that too like uh what world choices everyone has made because i feel like i don't know what the consensus is especially with solace and stuff like i know i care about solace a lot and like him, love him as a character but i'm sure there are a lot of people out there who hate him so i don't know um but yeah see you in part one of the actual game Bye.